With coronavirus officially hitting all 50 states in the country, it's nearly as ubiquitous as influenza. But unlike the flu, coronavirus hasn't killed nearly as many people. In 2018, the flu caused 61,000 deaths in the US. As of this video, coronavirus has killed less than 300. In what ways are these viruses similar, but also different? And is coronavirus more deadly than the flu? Firstly, let's look at the history of both the flu and coronavirus. The flu, more specifically influenza A, has been around for more than 2,500 years, with records as early as ancient Greece from Hippocrates. It's been responsible for most human pandemics in history, with the most recent being the 1918 Spanish flu. Due to it being around for so long, humans have built up an immunity over numerous generations. Influenza A is known to infect birds and mammals, and it's believed that the virus is transmitted from wild aquatic birds to domesticated poultry and then to humans. The actual virus responsible for the coronavirus pandemic is called the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. When compared to the flu, it's extremely young, with its first transition to humans being just four months ago. Since it's so new, humans have not built up an immunity to it, making it potentially deadlier. The SARS-CoV-2 virus is part of the coronavirus family that infects bats, and is very similar to the SARS-CoV virus of 2003. The World Health Organization believes the horseshoe bat was the original reservoir for it, and it was in December that the virus was spread from bat to human, but the mode of transmission has not yet been determined. Both viruses come from different viral families. Influenza A comes from the Orthomyxoviridae family, while SARS-CoV-2 is native to the Coronaviridae family. Coronaviridae gets its name due to the petal-shaped proteins on the virus's surface. Structurally, the viruses are very similar. Both are spherical in shape, however, SARS-CoV-2 tends to be slightly larger at 125 nanometers in diameter, whereas Influenza A is about 100 nanometers. Both are coated in a lipid envelope, have an internal capsid, and are RNA viruses, meaning they use their RNA to infect the host to replicate more viruses. The infection and replication cycle of influenza A goes like this. It first binds to the silic acid receptor on the surface of epithelial cells located in the nose, throat, and lungs from inhaling respiratory droplets. The virus is then absorbed into the cell cytoplasm where the acidic conditions disassemble the capsid releasing viral RNA. The RNA is then transported into the cell nucleus where complementary RNA is made and is then exported back out into the cytoplasm. Viral proteins are synthesized and assembled into new virions. The new viruses cluster into a bulge in the cell membrane and eventually bud off in a phospholipid sphere made of the cell's own membrane to infect other cells. The SARS-CoV-2 virus infects cells a little bit differently. The virus has spike proteins that attach to the ACE2 receptor on the surface of the host cell. Studies have shown that SARS-CoV-2 has a higher affinity to this receptor than the previous SARS virus from 2003, meaning it has a stronger attachment to the receptor, explaining why it's more infectious. After attaching, an adjacent enzyme to the receptor cuts open the spike protein, releasing the RNA into the cell. The viral RNA is synthesized into proteins in the cytoplasm and is then transported to the cell's endoplasmic reticulum, where they're assembled into new viruses. The new viruses are then transported out of the cell by secretory vesicles where they infect other cells. Both viruses share similar symptoms like fever, dry cough, and sore throat. However, with coronavirus, upper respiratory symptoms like runny nose and sinus congestion are not common, and less than 45% of patients have fatigue or muscle aches. In contrast, the flu has all of these symptoms. The flu's onset of symptoms appear after about 2 days, whereas coronavirus's onset is 1 to 14 days, with the median being 5, thereby allowing an infected person to spread it unknowingly, which is why the social distancing is so stressed. Transmission for flu and coronavirus are identical, the most common transmission method being airborne respiratory droplets from coughing or sneezing into the eyes, nose, or mouth of another person. The range that aerosol particles can travel from a sneeze is about 6 feet, and can carry as much as 40,000 respiratory droplets, which is why the CDC recommends this length for social distancing. The other form of transmission is the physical placement of viral particles from your hand to your eyes, nose, and mouth, by yes, touching your face. 
Flu activity begins in October, increases in December, and peaks in February. Because the flu and coronavirus are similar viruses in their structure, method of infection, and replication, they should both react to environmental changes in the same way. The noticeable drop in flu activity in March and April are due to an increase in temperature and humidity. In 2007, microbiologist Peter Police tested to see if there was a correlation between high temperature, high humidity, and the rate of survival for the flu virus. He found that with conditions at 43 degrees Fahrenheit and low humidity, the virus was viable up to 23 hours. At 90 degrees Fahrenheit and high humidity, the flu lasted less than one hour. A 2014 study from the Journal of Virology theorized why these conditions make viruses less effective. Firstly, whether it's viruses, human cells, or bacteria, low temperatures always reduce biological activity. This is why the food in your fridge perishes at a slower rate than if you left it out at room temperature. It's believed that the cold air passing through your airways reduces the enzyme activity in your immune cells, thereby decreasing their defense against viruses that are inhaled in your mouth, nose, and lungs. Secondly, lower humidity is believed to increase infection rates due to the lower presence of water in the air. The flu is predominantly spread by airborne respiratory droplets. Larger droplets spend less time in the air, whereas smaller droplets are airborne for longer. With less humidity in the air, water from the droplets actually evaporates off faster, thereby reducing the size of the respiratory droplets. This causes them to stay airborne for longer, increasing the likelihood of inhaling them. Influenza is usually self-resolving with rest, liquids, and the occasional pill for muscle aches and fever. If you're immunocompromised or elderly, influenza can be treated with antivirals, and there's also a vaccine, although it only reduces your chances by about 16 to 20 percent. Coronavirus, as far as we can tell, is also self-resolving with the same treatments of fluid and rest. However, because it's a brand new virus to humans, there's no antivirals or vaccinations to treat it. It may even take years to produce. This is why the immunocompromised and elderly are the most fatal targets. Finally, this brings us to the most controversial comparison between coronavirus and the flu, mortality rates. Influenza infects nearly 1 billion people worldwide, resulting in 650,000 deaths. Coronavirus has only caused about 16,000 deaths worldwide, so why is it believed to be deadlier? Well, for two reasons, death rate and the basic reproduction number. Influenza has a fairly low death rate of 0.1%, whereas the World Health Organization estimates coronavirus to be between 3 and 4 percent. For comparison, the 1918 Spanish flu had a death rate of 2.5 percent. More people die from the flu because more people are infected. If the rate of infections were lower, the death count would also be lower. This is the case with coronavirus. At the moment, the death count is still low because the total number of infections are also low. The second factor contributing to the seriousness of coronavirus is the basic reproduction number, or R0. The basic reproduction number estimates the expected number of cases caused by one case in a population, where all individuals are susceptible to infection. R0 is not a constant for a pathogen and is also affected by other factors such as environmental conditions and the behavior of the infected population. This means if infected people stay home, don't socialize, and call their doctor or hospital instead of going in person, the basic reproduction number will decrease. The R0 value for influenza is 1.3, while for coronavirus it's about 2.5, nearly double that of influenza. This number can go down, but is entirely dependent on how people behave with social distancing and quarantine rules. According to the CDC, if the U.S. did nothing to counter the virus pandemic, basically if we all went on as normal with working and socializing, the infections are predicted to reach over 400,000. We won't hit 400,000, but we could get close if we don't follow the CDC guidelines. So remember to maintain social distancing and don't touch your face. If your city has enacted quarantine, stay inside. Finally, if you feel sick and have these symptoms, don't physically go to the doctor or the emergency room. Track your symptoms and fever. Call the hospital. Don't go in person. I'm adding a link in the description where you can view real-time data of the spread of COVID-19 around the world, thanks to Johns Hopkins University. We are going to get through this. Thanks for watching and stay safe.